Not today, Baba. Go get him, Baba. Love you. Not today, Baba. Gordy, Gordy, can I bother you for a second? Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good afternoon, thank you. However you may be listening, why ever you, li you may be listening, folks, we're just happy you are indeed listening. I'm Big Game Bob coming to you on your local airwaves. Folks, we got an interesting way to start off this podcast this evening. Now, we're sitting here Monday evening. The Pittsburgh Steelers, that is Jersey Jerry's, beloved Pittsburgh Steelers, have just lost. They have just ruined their undefeated season. We are getting a very upset we are getting a very emotional jersey jerry tonight you know how we do things here we start off every episode with jersey jerry segment i'm sure he'll be coming in hot this evening again not a happy camper we're gonna head right on over to him we're gonna jump right in on this we're gonna move on with our gambling segment coming right out of the gates here we are close to the ten thousand dollars through our sponsorship here with BetMGM, without further ado, we bring on the Jersey man himself. That is Gerard Gilfone. Gerard Gilfone, are you with us? <laughs> Gerard Gilfone, are you with us, folks? For those of you not watching on what the do you want? Right now, what do you want? What do you Jersey want? Jerry had it has a hoodie above him. He has his Steelers jersey. He's got Stevie one their glasses on, so nobody could see his eyes right now. Jerry, talk to me. What are you going through? Uh, what? What do you want to know? What? What? No, what? Jerry, what? I want what? to know how you're feeling. It's a game that you should not have lost. Your beloved no. Pittsburgh Steelers. By no means can you lose that game yeah. in Pittsburgh. Jerry, by the way, you're still 11 and 1. So before you get yeah. all up in arms, just take it easy for a second. Talk no, to me. Why don't you take it easy, bro? Because no. I got a bunch of your people in my fucking DM right now. Oh, Jerry. So why don't you take it no, easy? No, Jerry, you love it when it's good DMs, but God forbid you got to face a little bit of adversity and all hell breaks loose. And I got news for you, Jerry, Don. We got a show to do week in, week out. This isn't every other week. You tell me you want to record after the game, so what do I do? I sit there, fine. Whatever time you want to start, Start, Jer. I'm on your clock. It's your segment. What happens? The Steelers lose, and you don't want to answer a phone call. And I got to beg and plead for you to come on. You didn't show. beg and plead. You didn't beg and I plead. Gotta, I had to beg and plead. Take it like a man. Take it. I am a man. I am a man. I am a man. Then take the sunglasses off if you are a man. You're not Howard Stern, Jerry Diesel. Jesus Christ, you lose to Alex Smith, who didn't even have a leg a year ago, comes back out and just hands it to your Steelers. And not only hands it to your Steelers, you just hide up and crawl in the fetal position. I got to get my girlfriend to convince you to come on the pocket. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Jim. I don't think so. You know, it Bob, what really, what, re what, really, what really bothers me is this, and I'll tell you one thing. Sure. Listen, if, you, if you're going to message me, if you're going to DM me, right? If sure. you're going to DM and me right make sure your fucking team is in the playoffs don't come at me as a jets fan don't come at me as a cowboys fan not an eagles fan okay if you're gonna message me and bring heat on me okay i respect it i'm with it but but, but, but be in the playoffs be in the hunt Jerry, what are the type of DMs you're getting now, Jerry? Jerry? Just bullshit shit, man. Listen, I'm we're 11 and 1. Yeah, it was undefeated, never lost. Now it's we lost once. Now let me ask you something, Jerry. Let me ask you something, Jerry. Cuz it's funny how Go ahead. Work. Last time I remember, you sent my good friend Joey Coldcuts when the Packers were playing the San Francisco Niners. You messaged Joey Coldcuts in his DMs and said, Rodgers is tearing an ACL tonight. Did you not do that out of whim? Yeah, I said that. You so said what? That. You don't think that's a shitty thing to say? I don't give a fuck. Well, you know what, Jerry? If you want to say that, fine. But when it comes back on you, you better be ready to pay the price. And you better be ready to take the chin. And you better you better not show up to the show with Stevie Wonder glasses so nobody can see your eyes. Yeah, Face I ain't crying. Look at my eyes. I never cried. Face the music, Jerry Don. And by Listen, the way, it, it, is, it is what it is, man. Listen, it is what it is. 11 and 1, so be it. We're still making the playoffs. I ain't worried about it. Listen, playoffs run through Pittsburgh. Playoffs run through Pittsburgh. 
play, to be honest with you, Jerry, playoffs haven't run through Pittsburgh in quite some time now, Jerry. This year they do. This year they do. Jerry, let me ask you something, okay? Because this is what I think about. I'm on FaceTime with you when I was able to get a hold of you. Your mom's screaming at you because you're being too loud. You're then getting emotional with your mom upstairs. When I think you got a good blue-collar, high-paying job, you got to get out of the house. Now, I love Miss Gilfone more than anybody, but but she's making you more emotional. You're screaming yeah. at her. Don't you think it's time to maybe kind of do some of this on your own, Jerry Diesel? Yeah, I think, it, I think it is time. I think it is time. I'm done with her shit, too. I'm done with everybody's shit. Jerry, what I think you need, I think you just need a good night's sleep. I think you need to just relax, okay? I think you get too emotional. You had a bad day at Domino's. Next thing you know, you quit Domino's. You quit your job in a matter of seconds. You just get too emotional. You got to be able to ride the wave. You know, Bob, if I wasn't sober, I'd be taking a Xanax right now. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. I'd be fucking taking a couple Xanax bars. No, Jerry, we absolutely do not want that. I don't even want you talking like that. But let me ask you this. Did you used to take Xanax? What'd you say? Did you used to take Xanax? I took Xanax a couple times. Xanax or Xanax? I think it's Xanax, Jerry. Xanax. Whatever it is. I took it a few times. I I didn't really like it, but it put me to sleep and it put me out. Jesus Christ, I think you need that more than anything. But, Jerry, we don't even want to tease with that. We don't want any part of that at all whatsoever. By the way, Jerry, just for your information, I think it's pronounced Xanax. Call me crazy. Whatever. Uh, whatever, whatever. Anywho, we are moving on, Jerry. Now, I need you to gather some emotions. I need you to get it together. Because the bottom line here right now, Jerry, is there's something very special going on right here. Through our sponsorship with BetMGM, the way it worked was they started out with $1,000 for us. They said, here you go, fellas. Here's $1,000. If you boys can turn this somehow, some way into $10,000, we'll let you cash out at exactly $10,000. The way we responded is, Jerry, we put our minds together. We started wheeling and dealing. Next thing you know, before last week, we're sitting at $5,305, a little short of $5,000 away from hitting the grand prize. Now, you'll take an 11-1 and Steelers team for $10,000, would you not, Jerry Don? Yeah, I would. Wouldn't we all, Jerry? So we sat at $5,305 as of last week. I need you to get it together me for me right now because the bottom line is, Jerry, you are the hottest gambler on the planet. There is no doubt about it. No question about it. Last yep. week, I took a shit college football game that lost us 550. I apologize about that, Jerry Don. Your response is, give me two racks on the Saints money line. We risked 2K on the Saints money line. Next thing you know, $1,176 you win us. Jerry, right now we sit at $5,931. We got picks coming in. This is the hottest gambler on the planet right now. Before mm -hmm. we do so, Jer, I need you to get it together. I need you to come in hot. I need you to let the people know who sponsors the Brilliantly Dump Show. Who sponsors the Brilliantly Dump Show? Come well, and guess hot, what? Jerry. Let them know. Use that anger out on the podcast. It's going to be an NFL season to remember at BetMGM Sports. Oh, dirty, and right now, they're beat. offering customers a chance to win $100 in free bets when you place $1 wager. Just sign up. Make sure your first bet is with bonus code Bro Bible 100 to Roller take advantage of the special offer. Emotions. Bonus private playouts, live betting, payouts, busted it, boosted odds, specials. Bet MGM has it all. Come oh, bet with us. It, Gambling it, problem, call 1 800 Campbell. Jerry, take it back a little bit for us. What's our promo code here, Jerry Diesel? What's our promo code? Bro Bible 100. Bro Bible 100. Bro Bible 100. Give me that middle part right there again, one more time there, there for, for me, Jerry Diesel. Bonus payouts, live betting, boosted odds, specials at Bet MGM. We have it all. Gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler. Jerry Diesel, do you have a gambling problem? Negative. I'm a winner. Hey, Jerry, we're happy to hear that now. The people want to hear from the hottest gambler on the planet. Jerry Diesel, let me ask you this. Who do we like this week? 
Who are we taking? I need you to rein it in for me here now, Jer. Don't pick out of emotion right now. Do what you've been doing. Do what got us here. We currently sit at $5,931. I don't want to fuck it up. We only go up from here. Jerry Diesel, talk dirty to me. Three words this week. <laughs> over, over, over. <laughs> I like where you're going, Diesel. Rain it in now, baby. Now, listen. <laughs> listen to this real close. The Minnesota Vikings versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There's not going to be a lick of fucking defense. Trust <laughs> me. I like it. Trust Diesel. me. It was always the over, and the over is sitting at 52 right now, which I think is very, very low. I'm going big, and I'm going real big, and I don't give a fuck what you say. Give me, give me, I want to risk 2,900 on the over. Jerry, 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 you got to, you got to take it. You got to take it. This is what I mean about betting out of emotion, Jerry. We're so yeah, well, well, but the two racks last week, that was okay because it hit, right? Jer, that no was okay about- because it hit, right? Hey. I built this bankroll. I built it. Jer, I will always give credit where credit's due. Give me 2900 now. Jesus Christ. Give me the bet we're doing again, Jer. You really want to risk $2,900 just out of the gate like that? Yep. Fifth, oh, over 52 points in the Vikings-Bucks game. Smash the fucking over. Trust me, it was always the over. Holy shit. Okay, I'm going to put this in right now, Jerry. You sure? Uh, By the way, it's over 52.5. Can you give me over 52.5? I don't give a fuck if it was at 57. Give me 52.5. Jer, are you betting with emotion or do you? No, I ain't betting with emotion. I'm betting smart. Just like that punk motherfucker Redskins fan messaged me last week. Jerry, we got kids watching the show here. You want to be raunchy? You could be raunchy, but just hold it back a little bit there, big fella. Would you? Hold it back a little bit now, big fella. Listen, listen. By the way, no fucking chance the Steelers should have lost that game. You're in Pittsburgh. And you're going to keep bringing it up. And you're going to keep bringing it up. Just shut the fuck up, Bob. Jared, Jared, just shut up now. You can't lose that football game. You just cannot. You have not been playing good football for the past two weeks. Now, hopefully, if only the Steelers were playing as good as you're betting right now, then you could really have something there. But the way it works right now, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to absolutely steamroll by you. But, Jerry, with that being said, you want to bet 29. You want to risk 29. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to risk 2,900. 2,900. Okay. Risk all to win $2,636. And Jerry, I said it once. I said it again. You're messaging me constantly week in, week out, day after day saying, Bob, put this in, put that in. This is our MGM account. We got to do this for the folks. I can't bring the folks on the show, Jerry Don, and all of a sudden we're at $2,000 and they got no idea why. There is people betting with you that want to see what you bet, that are betting with us, and there's people that are following us day to day, week by week, that want to follow the picks. You understand that, Jerry? Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Like I said, three words this fucking week, over, over, over. Bucks over. 52 Point five right there. Jerry, I want to tell you a little story. Go ahead. There's a guy in the NFL that I can't stand more than anything. I do not like this guy whatsoever. I'm going to give you a little story here about my friend Cam Newton, okay? Now, I was working at the Four Seasons Hotel. Jerry, you're going to really appreciate this story. I'm working at the Four Seasons Hotel. And I'm the guest services manager, and my guys notified me on the arrival list that there was a guy arriving that is most likely going to give us a very hard time that he's impossible to work with. You know who that name was on the arrival list, Jerry Don? Cam Newton. Cam Newton. You better believe it. Wow. Wow. Cam Newton. Now, these valet guys, these guest services guys, they've been working there for years and years and years. They've people, seen people come in, go out, star after star, celebrity after celebrity. And what I learned early in my career is that if these guys say that somebody's going to be an asshole, they're going to be an asshole. If somebody says somebody's going to be nice and be a big tipper, they're going to be nice. They're going to be a big tipper. Cam Newton comes to check in. I'm not there for his check in. However, a couple hours later, I walk into an elevator, Jerry Don. Guess who it is? Cam Newton. 
Cam Newton. You better believe it. I walk into that elevator. The elevator goes up. I very politely, with my suit on, I clearly work there. I say, good afternoon, Mr. Cam. I say, good afternoon, Mr. Newton. How are you? Just like that. Good afternoon, no Mr. Newton. No response? All right. So the elevator closes, okay? He doesn't say mm -hmm. anything back. I got my suit on. I clearly work there. A very light, good afternoon, Mr. Newton. How are you? Elevator's going up. I put my head down. Jer, I could feel this guy looking at me. I, hmm. could, I could feel it. I look up. Cam looks me right in the eye, and he says, you don't know me. Wow. And I look up, and I said, no, no, Mr. Newton, not, not personally. I, I apologize. So he goes, so why would you say hello? Wow. And what I a said, scumbag. I said, Mr. Newton, I, I, I apologize. It will not happen again. He walks out of the elevator and Jer, I said that very day, I will root against whatever team this guy is on for the rest of my life. So what I'm going to do here, Jerry, is I'm truly going to bet out of nothing but emotion. There is no reason why I like this game. No rhyme. No reason why I like the spread. Whatever it may be, I was going against the Patriots, and I'm being flat out honest with you, good, Jerry. Good. Do you blame I, me, Jerry Diesel? Not even a little bit. Not so even a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. The Smash Rams it. The Rams square up. Can I smash it, Jerry Diesel? Smash it. Why not? Can I Fuck. smash it? Can we go Fuck against QB1? Can we go against Cam Newton here? Oh, yeah. Give me give me $500. Give me $500 on the Rams strictly solely because I absolutely cannot stand Cam Newton. That's give what the, the spread? Give me the Rams at minus six. I want to go ahead and take the Rams minus six. Six for five hundred, risking five fifty. Jerry, we want to get to ten thousand, and I want to do it at Cam Newton's expense. Let's blitz them. Let's send whatever package we got to send out of them. I want the entire brilliantly dumb faithful, everybody listening to this show, knowing that Cam Newton is a jackass. Maybe I caught him on a bad day, but then maybe all of the valet guys that have been dealing with him for years and warned me about this guy caught him on multiple valet on bad days. He seems like a piece of shit anyway. And Jerry, from what I experienced, he absolutely is. I remember calling my dad after I said, dad, you'll never believe this. My dad said the same thing. He said, I will root against this guy for the rest of his career. Fuck him. Don't mess with Bobby. You don't mess with Jersey Jerry. You don't mess with the Brilliant Dumb Faithful. Go ahead. Give me the Rams at minus six come Thursday night football. Jerry bet a big old bankroll on the Bucks over 52.5, risking 2,900 to win 2,636. We currently sit at $5,931. I sound like the fucking rain man right now, so I'm going to stop. You're hot. I'm hot. Jerry, let's keep the ball rolling. Let's gain it together right now, okay? We see you for happy hour Wednesday for the Patreon folks. In the meantime, we are going to be moving on. Jerry Diesel. See you in the fucked up papers. See you in the funny papers, Jerry Diesel. Well, folks, just another way 2020 has thrown us for a loop. The holidays. Lots of my go-to gifts are non-starters this year. Those concert tickets that you wanted to get don't matter no more. The dining gift cards that you wanted to get don't matter no more. Get the people what they want and most importantly, what they could use. My silver, silver bullet gift idea, the Raycon wireless earbuds. Folks, when I run around the block, I like to zone in. I can't go see Billy Joel in the garden right now, so I like to put them in my ear. I do that with the Raycon wireless earbuds buds, just ripping around the block with these things. The audio quality is amazing, comparable, comparable to what you get from other premium brands, except Raycon start at half the price. Yes, I said it, half the price. Raycon's being generous for the holidays, so on top of their everyday great prices, they're offering my listeners 15% off right now. Yes, you, the brilliantly dumb faithful, 15% off right now. Go to buyraycon.com slash dumb. Yes, I said it, dumb. Buyraycon.com slash dumb today to get 15% off your Raycon order. In the meantime, we are moving on. Yeah, I went to a funeral the other day. 
you want to talk about just an awful situation, not even just the funeral in itself. Believe it or not, it's kind of hard to say, but this is actually about to get worse, this story here. Maybe one of the most awkward situations of my life. I show up to the funeral. Didn't really know the person that well, but it was one of those things where I should definitely be there. It was the right thing to do. You know, sometimes even on funerals, you go simply because it's just the right thing to do. Sounds pretty screwed up, but you, you, you do. You go to one of those things, but I went to this funeral and in the middle of the funeral, I got to take a shit. I got to take a shit. And taking a shit and a funeral just doesn't really go hand in hand. Not many things do go hand in hand with taking a shit, but it just didn't add up. It's already an uncomfortable feeling being at a funeral. It's even that much more uncomfortable when you got a shit during that funeral. So I went over to one of the people there, didn't really know what relation they had to the person that had passed. So I just started with, so sorry with your loss, sir. Uh, bathroom, where would be the close? He goes, sure thing. See the casket right over there? Just to the right of it. Yeah, uh, sir, I, uh, I do see the casket. Did you really have to use the casket as a North Star for me? As a visual point to find my way to the bathroom? There's a couple trees behind the casket. You couldn't have said, see those trees right there, just to the right-hand side? Really appreciate that, MacGyver. I'll be right on my way to go drop a shit. Thank you. So I get in, and it's just getting worse. I get in to go take the shit. Nobody's in the bathroom. They're in the middle of like this, the, the ceremony, for lack of a better word. I'm dropping this shit. And, and by the way, for me to take the shit during the funeral, keep in mind, that's going to be a pretty ugly shit. It was. One of those shits that are just very uncomfortable, where you know no matter how many times you wipe, you just can't seem to fully clean that sucker up down there. It's like if you don't have a bidet on hand, you're not going to be very, feeling very comfortable for the rest of the day, no matter how many times you wipe. It was one of those. Guy comes in hysterically crying. Somebody follows right after to kind of console that guy, and he's not doing a very good job of it. If only, if anything, he's kind of making it worse. And now I got a time. What would be the appropriate time to release this shit right here and just make a big old splash? And just drop this dookie down. Just a horrific situation. Absolutely horrific. I'm afraid of, you know, a little fart's going to squeeze out of there, which would make it even worse. I'd almost just rather have the splash of the water over the fart. He was such a good guy. Oh, he really, really. Just terrible. Just terrible. So finally, I wipe up, didn't get the full thing. Of course, there was no bidet on hand. I go back to my seat. I saw the original MacGyver that led me to the bathroom. Did you find it okay? Yeah, I did, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thankfully, I found the casket, so I was able to take a shit. I appreciate the directions. Shall we proceed here in the funeral process? Rest in peace, Charlie. Anywho. Folks, here on The Brilliant Dumb Show, we are moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, however you may be listening right now here to The Brilliant Dumb Show, I'd like you to do me a favor here, sit back, relax, and enjoy the chaos that is about to come here on The Brilliant Dumb Show for one of the toughest top five Ask Bob questions I am yet to receive on the show to date here. We all know the drill of the Ask Bob segment. Let's say it again for the fine folks out there. It's the Ask Bob segment week by week. You know the damn drill. Tuesday after Friday, Tuesday after Friday. I tell you fine folks, file on into my DMs. Whether it be through the Patreon DMs or the Instagram DMs, submit your question to be featured on the Ask Bob segment. Folks, it's about to get a little hostile in here. Coming from a young man out of Faldosta, Georgia, Justin Hendricks. Hey, Bob, longtime listener, first timer on the Ask Bob submission. First off, I want to say go Bulldogs. 
Second off, I want to ask you a question that may divide your audience a bit, and I'm sorry for that, but I got to know. Give me your top five Taco Bell items of all time. Folks, after seeing this question, I realized one thing and one thing only. The two things that are going to divide your audience and the only two things that it'll be is A, politics. We don't talk about politics here on the Brilliant Dumb Show. And B, a top five, top Taco Bell item list. It is a very hard thing to know. Let me tell you something, folks. As the fast food connoisseur that I am, I got Taco Bell in my three seed of top five fast food joints. But I will tell you is that Taco Bell fans are diehard fans. They're different from McDonald fans. They're different from Wendy's fans. These guys are hardcore. Taco Bell is like the SEC of college football for fast food. These fans are different. They lead, they live, they breathe, and all they do is eat Taco Bell, and they will support their brand at any and all cost to support the image and protect the image that is Taco Bell. Without further ado, I'm going to rattle off my top five items coming to you here hot on the Brilliantly Dumb Show. Let's go dancing, shall we? Going to ruffle a lot of feathers here, but it's showtime. Number five, we're going five to one here, one being the best, of course. Number five, I got Nachos Bel Grande. Possibly the most underrated Taco Bell item there is. Very diverse item in the sense that you can either get it as a meal or you could get the Nachos Bel Grande as a $2 side. Really like the diversity you're getting out of the Nachos the Bel Grande. I got Bel Grande in the five spot, in the five seed there. And again, I don't think it gets the credit it deserves. Give me the Nachos Bel Grande at five. Number four, I'm going quesadilla. Whether you go chicken or steak, that's totally up to you, folks. The Taco Bell quesadilla has been bringing that heat ever since Taco Bell arrived on the scenes. Now, I will say, folks, it never has found his way to the top of the charts, but the quesadilla has been something that you can rely on through thick and thin with Taco Bell. That's forever been the case. The only downfall while I'm giving it that four spot, I will say, is the quesadilla does not fill you up the way some other items do. Make sure you're slapping on a lot of sides to that quesadilla order, especially if you're going to do it as the meal. The Taco Bell quesadilla has been there through thick and thin. Don't ever forget it. I sure don't. I got it in the four seed. Number three, I got chalupa. Some might consider the chalupa the staple of Taco Bell, and I can get on board with that. I cannot fight that. You don't think of Taco Bell without thinking of the Chalupa. It's the same way you don't think of McDonald's without thinking the Big Mac. The Chalupa has been there from day one, the same day, the same way the quesadilla has been. However, I will say the Chalupa slaps just a little bit harder than the quesadilla is. Go ahead and give me the Chalupa at three. Number two, it's getting interesting here, folks. Brace yourselves. Number two, I got the cheesy gordita crunch. As far as I'm concerned, the saying you don't know what you got till it's gone started because of the cheesy gordita crunch. Taco Bell pulled this item off the menu and all hell broke loose. Now, as upset that I was that they would pull an item so great off the menu, I will say from a marketing standpoint, I think it's a phenomenal play. I would have done the same thing if I was the CEO at Taco Bell. Now, I'm a consumer, so I wanted to see it on the menu. But I will tell you, for, from a standpoint of, you know, look, look, take a look at what, for example, McDonald's, all right? McDonald's pulled the McRib from McDonald's, and again, all hell broke loose. Nobody really liked the McRib that much. But because it was taken away from us, it made us want it more. You don't know what you got till it's gone. That's exactly what the McRib did. Now, the McRib at McDonald's just came back and people are ordering it left and right when they really never even liked it that much in the first place. If the McRib was never pulled from McDonald's, nobody would be ordering it. Nobody would really give a shit. But because it was pulled from us, we then wanted it that much more. You don't know what you got till it's gone. I think that's the case with the cheesy gordita crunch. 
They pulled it from the Taco Bell menu, brought it right on back. All is right with the world. I like cheesy gordita crunch in the two seed. Number one, you better believe it, folks. I hope you're with me here. If not, I just don't know what you're doing. That is indeed the crunch wrap supreme. Folks, you want to talk about innovation? Let's talk innovation. It's a quesadilla. It's a taco. You get everything inside the taco. You can mix it up. You throw a little sour cream. The Crunch Wrap Supreme might be one of the greatest menu items that there are in fast food. Now, I'm taking the Chick-fil-A sandwich, number one, but the Crunch Wrap Supreme is not far away in the two seat on that as well. I got Crunch Wrap Supreme there as the number one item right there. Folks, whether you agree or disagree, I would actually love to get your feedback on it because to be quite frank with you, not to pat myself on the back, I think that's a phenomenal top five. If I don't say so myself, I'd like to know where did I go wrong? Where did I go right? File into the DMs. Let me know. That does it here for the Brilliantly Dumb Show. Wednesday, yes, I said it, Wednesday, tomorrow. We got happy hour. We've been doing this week after week after week. It is fucking phenomenal. I'm having an absolute blast myself. Maddie Rigatoni, Jersey Jerry, Joey Cold Cuts, and I believe we're getting our boy Tyler Cameron as well again on happy hour tomorrow. Be ready to let it rip. For those of you that just joined to the Patreon, be sure and send your address into the Patreon DMs. Let's get a brilliantly dumb show koozie right out to you, folks. I appreciate you. I love you. We'll see you next time here on the Brilliantly Dumb Show. Not today, Bubba. Go get him, Bubba. Love you. Not today, Bubba. Gordy, Gordy, can I bother you for a second?